do you feel like there's just too much social stuff, just too much on time all the time? Maybe this is in your business, at work, maybe this is personally, but you just feel the sense of, I'm really overwhelmed and I really don't want to reach out. I, I'm tired of it. So we're talking about loners, those of us who really thrive, uh, feeling like I need a lot of time to myself. And how do I grow something big and juicy and heartfelt and connected and wealthy in my life when I'm basically a lone wolf? Well, let's take a look at that right now. It's a show where we talk about the power of your mind to change your world around you, to literally affect the fabric of your reality. We talk about this feeling of hope and joy and relief. And that is what being aware of your flow does. It gives you a feeling of power again in your lives. I'm Summer McStravick, and welcome to another episode of Flow Dreaming. So I started um, my work in Flow Dreaming so many years ago. What are we talking, like 15 or more years ago now? I started with just sharing my vision, sharing my technique with people individually. I I shared it with my friends and my family, of course. Um, I shared it with people at work and gradually more and more of them. And you guys maybe have heard this story. I used to work for Hay House, uh, Louise Hay's publishing company. I worked there for a decade and and, uh, I'd get together with my friends and we'd go into the warehouse, you know, where we would be shipping the books from, uh, because the corporate and the warehouse were uh, together way back then. And, um, we started with, hey, let's do some manifesting, let's do some flow dreaming, you know, so our uh, company weekly lottery ticket buy can maybe have a little more extra juice around it. And before I knew it, there was this giant circle of like everyone wanted to get in on it. Um, not just because we wanted to personally win the lottery, but because we were creating just luck and positivity and shifting the energies in our lives. You know, and it was like five minutes at lunchtime. Why not? But really, this this grew from me just being me, not reaching out, not showing myself off, um, just sharing um, and, and teaching. So fast forward. And I think over the years... I noticed something change. And I'm sharing my personal story with you because if you're a loner, like an intrinsic introvert loner like me, you might get this. You might be like, oh my God, you're describing me to a T. So over the years, as my business started to grow and I wrote more books and I my podcast is, you know, taken off and I'm speaking and getting up on stages and doing, uh, you know, conferences and teaching people, I started to meet a lot of others in, you know, the personal growth and coaching communities. And I started to feel this kind of sweeping energy of more bigger all the time more reach, more uh, social, more, 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 more. And where I used to have a single Facebook outlet, I ended up with Facebook, multiple pages, Instagram, multiple pages, Pinterest, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, just all of this. And of course, there's emails and there's the podcast and then my own clients I'm serving and, and of course, regular outreach and visibility, speaking with other people and PR. And I just felt like this giant sucking wind, you know, as the world felt like it was just pulling me and draining me. Not to mention my own peer groups. And in my own peer groups, there was this style 
of you got to get out there. You got to hustle, honey. If you want to be, uh, you know, working with and top talking with the other big peers in your field, you've got to be putting together these deals with them and collaborating with them and, you know, doing all this just constant. And the, and the masterminds and the, and the meetings that we would go to were all about who's getting the most connections, right? Who's, who's, who's coming out with like the most big bang for their, you know, showing upness because they must be the leaders. Here's what happened. A few years ago, I realized, God, this is not me. <laughs> this is not me. It's super cool to be around other big personal growth uh, luminaries, right? And see and talk with them about how are you growing your businesses? How are you reaching out to people? How are you sharing your technique? What is your technique? Is it working? Is it changing people? What What's, you know, really reaching people the most? Right? There's all kinds of sort of professional knowledge that I was gaining. But the one thing that I felt like I was consistently losing ground on was this kind of almost masculine-based traditional ideas about outreach that were really, really centered on a kind of extroverted mania. Be everywhere all the time. Be showing up in your peers' faces all the time, collaborating, making friendships, on, 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 on. Constant onness. And I got... One, disheartened, and two, kind of burned out. Three, I started to really doubt myself. Kind of like, I know I'm good at this, and I know that flow dreaming is amazing because it reaches millions of people, but why can't I do what they're doing? What's wrong with me? And I know some of you have felt this because in your own lives, you're trying to grow something. Maybe you have a side gig or a coaching business. Maybe you are just trying to grow your career and and your professional networks. Whatever it is, maybe you've also fallen and been swept into this kind of extroverted mania and masculine-centered way of showcasing who you are. And there's this little whisper in you that says, that's not who I am. No wonder I'm continuously not doing great at this. So today, let's completely readjust our brains around this and get comfortable with who we are and understand that you can be phenomenal. You can be a leader. You can grow and share your light, your knowledge as big and bright as you want. And yes, you can do it your way. So I'm going to dig into this, what's really a mindset piece in today's episode of Flow Dreaming. Um, Some of you know that in my episodes, I often do the Flow Dreaming practice and technique. It's a really powerful, emotional, energetic practice using our emotions and flow energy and manifesting. If you're looking for that kind of episode, scroll back. Sometimes I uh, do Flow Dreams in my episodes and you can dive right in. But today, I just, I want to just shift how you think and feel. So let's talk about the energy of a loner, the good and the bad, right? Because this is what you're really leading with in your life if you are a more loner type introverted person. So the good parts of being a loner, like myself, I am really self-sufficient, right? I learned this young. Most of us did. We learned that I can get it done you're the, you're the kid who in school and you, they put you in a group project, you just groaned inside. You're like, oh my God, I'm going to have to do it all myself. And you ended up doing it all yourself and you probably got an A. It means that we're often good at our own internal pace, right? We can be very productive and we can do things in a way that suits us, our inner natures. We're also good at following our own uh, drumbeat, right? We, we just know like, this is what I want to do. And this is what I'm going to win it when I'm going to do it. And this is how I'm going to get it done. And I'm hearing and I'm listening, right? We're really intuitively connected with ourselves. If something feels wrong, we know it, we might still do it because we've been pulled over into that extrovert world. But generally we know, 
what feels right and good. Just a matter of sticking to it. Also, as a loner, oh man, we are so often immersed in this creative soup of our own inner feelings and ideas, right? We have a lot of time that we spend inside of ourselves thinking, dreaming, coming up with ideas, getting excited by them, you know, just like making this overwhelming outpouring of things I want to do which often translates in, into a kind of insane productivity, right? You sit down and you just get your stuff done and then you still have a giant list of more things to get done because really you're just still thinking of what you want to do. These are all great energies as loners, right? Loners are also people who when they do connect, we connect deeply. Uh, we connect like you're my person. Like we, we just, we know it. We meet someone else who's, who's in our, you know, wheelhouse. And I'm just like, I even say this to people sometimes. I say, I really like you. I like you. And, you know, they're taken aback because, you know, that's something a kid would say to another kid. I like you. Do you want to play? I say it as an adult. I like you. I feel you. Let's stick together. Let's not lose touch. And it's a really different vibe than that kind of false I like you, let's do business together, let's work together, oh, we're both in the same blah, 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 where you feel like you should get along, but really you know you're really different. So our connections tend to be more intimate, deep-rooted, long-lasting, and consequently fewer. I have several girlfriends, three of them in fact, that I have known since I was 6 to 12 years old. I have a lot of long-term people in my life. I get you and I keep you. These are wonderful things about who you are as an introvert, as a loner. Now, the flip side of this, the bad side, the negative side, if you will, the energy that brings you down, that just you know scatters you as a loner, that was my scattered sound, <laughs> is that we loners often became loners because there was something in our life that made us feel like we didn't fit in, right? We were left out. We were rejected. Often it started young. And we said, fine, if you don't want me, I don't want you. I'll make it all up myself, right? I can do this by myself. I have a great imagination. I can go play by myself and I have a great time. I love books. I'm going to escape into them. But we carry this into our loner adulthood where we go into situations feeling now like, I'm probably going to be misunderstood. They are probably not going to pick me. I will probably not be the person that they want to collaborate with. They will probably not see me for a promotion because they're going to pick that other more happy person in the department. Right? The feelings then that we project, that we pre-act into our future, we go, we go forward with this thing that I call bracing. This is a me school term. You know, I teach the course called me school. Fantastic, by the way, six month program. Uh, get into it if you want it. It's enrolling right now. Just had to throw that out there. But one of the big concepts is bracing. And this is where you walk forward into things in your life with a sense of defensiveness right off the get go. Well, what do you think this does to things that are uh, in your future that you're trying to manifest or co-create? You walk in with defensiveness, which is like a shield that pushes things away. At the same time, you're calling them into you. We loners can accidentally get into that feeling state of, I feel really restricted. I feel like everybody else is getting the goodies but me. Everybody else is getting interviews. Everybody else is getting seen out there. They're getting promotions. They're getting transferred into better positions. They're getting, you know, whatever it is that rolls through your life. And yeah, I'm referring largely to uh, career and work situations, but really it can be anywhere. My friend groups, you know, somebody else has all these friends, but I don't. I'm kind of always rejected from the friend group. I get the occasional invite. But generally speaking, I feel pretty limited. Limited. And this turns into other energies. I feel frustrated a lot. I feel mad at the world. I feel indignant. Why don't they see me? What's wrong with them? They should understand how awesome I am. That's the downside of being a loner. That's the 
Uh Uh-oh, don't slide into that. And you probably kind of, as I'm saying it, you're like, yeah, I actually do slide into that sometimes. Yes. But how do we shift that? How do we just work with the good loner energy that you have? How do you make something spectacular, beautiful, big, prosperous, abundant, healthy, balanced in your life? How do you have those good, deep, rich connections with people when you kind of feel like I'm a loner? How am I ever going to grow if I can't do what everyone else does? Well, remember how I said, loners tend to feel very overwhelmed, right? We feel like I've got to show up all the time. I've got to call people back. I've got to email people. I've got to text people back. I've got to message them back. I've got to um, write on my Facebook, you know, boards and LinkedIn answers. I've got to uh, constantly make more content to go out there and talk with people and do live. And I'm being sucked dry, absolutely sucked dry. Like, what do I do? How do I grow without having to be that extroverted being? Because remember, people who are extroverts, they actually build their energy off of all of those things, right? The more that they do of those things, the more energized they feel, the more connected they feel, the more on fire they feel. And we loners were the opposite. We just feel like this giant sucking sound. And then at the end of the day, we're like, now I actually have to serve my, my clients or my people or my peers or whatever it may be. How do we shift that? So I'm looking at my good loner habits, right? These are the ways that I build things in my life, that I co-create, that I manifest, that honestly are a little off the beaten track. And this actually, you know, this this whole episode is really inspired by my Born to Make program. I've mentioned two programs, Me School. My other one is called Born to Make. And it's like a real subset group, very inexpensive monthly membership where I teach other creative, spiritual entrepreneurs how to build and make things. A lot of these people are loners like me. A lot of really creative people are loners because they're always in their own creative process, right? Like that's where it springs from. And then getting out there and marketing it and selling it, that's like, oh, I don't want to do that because I love being in my interior world. So this actually speaks a great deal to you born to make types. By the way, look that up. It's at flowdreaming.com. I would love to have you in the program um, and really support you there. But what I've realized is that those of us who are creatively driven entrepreneurs, like really spiritual driven people, loners, we have some stellar habits that the others don't have. Now, one of the things that we do is we are really good at sort of organically getting out there. By organic, I mean, we like to just follow what feels good. If it's making a phone call to someone that we connect with, awesome. If it's writing an article and and sending it out there, writing a blog, sharing our ideas on paper, maybe sharing it on a podcast, great. We don't get pulled or we're good, we're best, when we're not getting pulled into this kind of, I'm going to use the word masculine dominated way of getting out there. And I'm say, I'm equating mas- uh, um, uh, masculine with uh, extroverted for, for one reason. I know it's not a perfect match. But in masculine-dominated arenas, you are expected to be strong, be tough, show up, get in people's faces, get out there, make the connections, seal the deal. It is a more aggressive style of getting yourself out in the world. And for many of us loners, it is absolutely anathema to us. God, I love that word. I haven't used it in a long time. Anathema. Death. Horrible. (laughs) And... I've noticed something about myself. I do worst when I am really in these competitive masterminds or events, these masculine dominated arenas like large conferences or peer to peer network groups where everybody's sort of jockeying unspokenly for who's doing the best. And in those arenas, I'm expected to outreach and network and form these collaborations and, you know, put myself in, in extrovert mode. 
And I've tried it, believe me, year after year. But what I realize is that I'm often trying, I'm an introvert, I'm a loner, trying to connect with people who are natural extroverts and more masculine-centered people. And you know what, guys? The two just don't match. So when I walk away from all these conferences and I realize uh, there's not really many people I'd, I'd want to follow up with. Or, yeah, I'd like to, but nobody's doing it. Or I'm not doing it with them, or they're not doing it with me. Or we kind of do it and it falls apart. I used to think it was me. I used to think, oh, well, they just don't like me. You know, I'm a loner. Ah, something wrong with me. Now I realize it's like two energies, a positive and negative energy that just like aren't clicking. And I want to share that with you because... That's what a lot of us loners are trying to do over and over again. Put ourselves in these environments and expect to be successful. But you're, you're, you're a duck out of water, right? You're trying to connect with a bunch of people who find it very easy to do this. And for us, we don't. It's not where we thrive and where we flourish. You know where we fly, thrive and flourish? Well, this is one of those good loner habits. We do great in small, intimate groups. We do wonderful having coffee with friends. We do great with the written word where we can be inside of ourselves and release our thoughts and our energy and our creativity and our skills out into the world that way. We're bloggers, right? We're newsletter writers. We're great with podcasting, speaking into a microphone. I mean, once you get used to it, Because it's a real intimate experience. I know you're listening to me, but at the moment, I'm actually just speaking to one person, speaking to one person right now. And I feel like I'm having a a, a coffee with you and we're talking about this. And that feels very intimate and close to me. It's good for me as a loner. So I want you to figure out where are you at your best? Because there are ways for you to reach out and be seen and be heard and build things. Capitalizing and utilizing your specific way of doing it. Right? My professional relationships are when I have one-on-one coffee via Skype with a few people, a handful that I've met over the years. Not the biggest, brightest people. In the, in, this, in the sphere of where I you know, live and teach in. Because often the biggest, brightest people, they're full-on extroverts. They're like, make a deal with me or I'm not going to actually talk to you. I'll do it for a while, but if we don't end up making a deal, I'm going to cut you loose and move on to someone else. I know that sounds bad. I'm not putting extroverts down. But I am putting um, this kind of masculine, very outbound, energetic style of, of connecting into a place where I've seen it not work for me. And if you are that extrovert who is making those connections and yes, you're facilitating relationships because you thrive off the interaction with all different kinds of people until you realize, well, maybe that one's not going to go someplace. I'm going to go someplace else. That's awesome. Keep doing it. But for introverts, I'm giving you guys the permission to understand this is why you may not be connecting with those extroverts. We do it differently. We do things differently. We are subtle. We are organic. It's a more feminine mindset. Uh, Again, feminine not meaning weak or passive whatsoever, but meaning intimate, organic, open. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm preserving my interior energy for the act of creation or teaching or those other skills that feel much more comfortable and relaxed inside me. You know, the biggest takeaway that I want you guys to get today is for you to understand and again, have permission You can be a loner who is exceedingly successful. I have taught hundreds, actually probably thousands of students uh, and people now, uh, certainly tens of thousands who, uh, hundreds of thousands who have listened to my podcast or, you know, absorbed my books and other ways of teaching. And I did not do that by running around like a crazy person. 
I did that by producing things that represent my voice so that everyone, these people, all these people can connect with me in a one-on-one way because that's how I shine. And that's frankly how I'm best at reaching people. And this is how I've been able to build a really successful life, a successful brand with flow dreaming. And I hope really successful change in the people that hear me and take in what I have to say and offer. So you are able to do this. I have done this. I have a myriad of friends and peers who've also done it our way. But you see, we're not all flash and bang and rockets and firecrackers. So we're kind of percolating underneath the visibility belt when it comes to do it my way. Here's how we do it, right? Because we're loners. <laughs> we, we, we don't do that. So it can give the impression that we're not here and that it doesn't exist. But it does. And maybe now that you understand it, you'll be able to shift your feelings about yourself, own your lonership. Oh my God, that's a new word. Own your lonership and really start blazing ahead by focusing in on only those areas where your loner skills, your loner abilities are paying off for you. So I identified some of mine for you, hoping you'd relate, but you have more that you can also find. And with that, my friends... I'm going to wrap up our episode today. I know, abrupt little ending, but it's not really because, of course, I always have a few uh, resources uh, for you where I suggest, hey, go here and get this if you want it. I really want you guys to, to check out the Entrepreneur's Flowbook, Thriving Wealthy Entrepreneur. You can find that at flowdrimming.com. Um, it's a seven-day program that resets your mind, your energy, your outbound energy, everything. Uh, For those of you who are wanting to grow something in your life, really, really great program. I released it mm, a few months ago, but I've yet to really promote it. So it's still just kind of percolating out there, but I I have to mention it (laughs) because it's so, so good. Um, so take a peek at that. And of course, if you guys have any comments for me, I love to hear them. Summer at flowdreaming.com. Like I said, I'm your one-on-one gal. Don't be surprised if you get a personal answer from me. And in addition, I've begun posting this show uh, up on YouTube. So if you like to cruise through YouTube and listen in the background while you do things, this is perfect for you. Until next time, my love to you all, and I'll see you again for some more Flow Dreaming. I want to take a moment to tell you about Me School. Now, of course, you can look all of this up on the website at flowdreaming.com. Look up Me School, and the whole thing will be written out for you in great and glorious detail. But as long as you're here and you've just been listening to this episode, Maybe the thoughts crossing your mind. What would happen if I really learned all of this flow dreaming stuff? What would happen if I gave myself some personal growth on a really stepped up level? What would I be capable of? Where could I go? Most of my me schoolers enter me school not exactly knowing where they want to go. And that's Mistake number one I want you to avoid. You don't have to know what you're trying to create for yourself. If you've been through a transition recently or you're even just looking at the next decade of your life and thinking, what's going to happen in it? Well, I'm here. We're here because that's what we specialize in. Showing you, helping you, pointing you where you can say, ah, I know how I'm going to feel in that decade. And I know some of the things now that I want to add in. We take you from a place of being stuck and not knowing into a place of total powerful clarity, of excitement. You are raring to go. And maybe that's a feeling you haven't had in a while. Well, it's still there. It's hiding. And I know how to get it back. So come join me. Come visit. We are a beautiful, vibrant, loving 
uh, intimate community of very powerful, accepting creators, seekers, and dreamers. We make things happen. You will be intensely surprised by the quality of people who are around you. And why? Because I spend my time with you for a whole year and I'm picky. (laughs) I am, which means that everyone in me school is a choice cut, man. They're the top. They're the best people. Doesn't mean they're the biggest in their careers or this or that, but they're good people and they're people who do the work and they're generous people, and they're loving people. They're the people I want to hang out with. And I'm inviting you to come in with us. Because over the course of the year, we're going to talk together every month, multiple times a month. You're going to be learning things. You're going to be testing things, trying things. I have hundreds of techniques that I teach you. And we go over them together. And they will reveal you and unfold you to yourself in a way you have never seen before. So please come join me. At least get on my schedule to talk to me. I open up times throughout my uh, work month (laughs) where I talk to potential new students. And it's gentle. We just discuss, hey, are you ready? Are you almost ready? Maybe you're not ready. We'll find out. But it's good to call and it's good for us to talk because it puts it on your radar and it's the first step in your commitment to yourself. So I invite you to go to flowdreaming.com, swipe to it on your phone or go on your desktop and go ahead and set up a time and let's talk. I can't wait. So I have a really important question for you, me school. You've heard me talk about it, mention it. And I'm just wondering when it might be a fit for you. When you might jump to the next level, which is going from maybe listening to the flow dreams and playing with them, or listening to this podcast and saying, there is, there is a next point from here. And I've been kind of playing around the same area for quite a while. And uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to see what else there is. And maybe you're nervous and scared. You don't know how much it costs. You don't know what happens there. You don't know what will happen for you there. Look, don't be. Just don't be scared. Me School is the most beautiful thing I think I have made in my life. But it's the most beautiful thing because I take you, really, you, people just like you, into the program. And I take all the learning that I have been blessed with, that I have been mentored with. And I have been mentored and blessed with some pretty amazing people in my life. And my job is to carry this information forward, to then pass it on to you. And what we pass on is how to live well, 
how to be you, authentically you, how to live into who you are, who you came here to be, how to find that, how to move through your ceilings and blocks and blossom. You know, you're probably looking at this next big chunk of your life and wondering what's going to be there? What's going to be in it? Is it going to be the same as it was before? Well, for it to be different, you need to start choosing yourself. You need to invest in yourself. You need to invest in your growth. You need to consciously say, I'm ready. It's time. I'm ready now. That's what we do in me school. We spend that time. And that's what we look at. Personal power. Your ability to generate wealth, security, time frame. We look at your emotional self. Are you in love with yourself? Are you in love with life? If you're not, let's make that happen. It's just a question of whether you say yes or whether you say no yet again. So jump on over to my website, flowdreaming.com, and you'll find there a link, a button, an image. There'll be something where you can learn more about me school and set up a time to talk with me, and we will get you going. I'll share and answer all of your questions and uh, hopefully be able to start working with you as you discover what your life is really there for and how it really wants to show up for you. So right now, go to flowdreaming.com and just get your time scheduled for us to talk and think about me school and where you're going next. Just get it done. It's past time. And now, let's get back to our show. Is just 38470. And then write the word flow, F-L-O-W, in the message area. That way, I can get your free kit sent right over to you, which includes a flow dream called Positive Flow for you to begin working with, as well as an audio guide and a tutorial. Remember, this only works in the U.S. If you're outside the country, go to my website and fill out your information there. And I hope you have a lot of fun with this. Imagine if there were a store where you could walk down the aisle and pop some self-love into your basket. Or how about tons of clients? Or maybe you're more in the mood for some relationship repair. Or how about more money monthly? These are all flow dreams and you can literally put them in your basket. You can use them, feel them, take them inside you and become them. Become these things inside so that the universe starts offering them to you on the outside in your life. You tell the universe who you are by feeling it first. You can find all of these flow dreams. I have more than a hundred of them. They're at flowdreaming.com in my shop. 
browse through, pick the things that you want to become and put them in your cart. Now you can find the Flow Dreaming Shop both on a regular computer as well as on your mobile device. On your mobile device, you can either use your browser to go to flowdreaming.com or you can download my free app where you can browse through, listen to samples of all of the flow dreams that I've just been talking about. So go check them out. Choose a few playlists. Get started. Pick up my free kit that teaches you how to flow dream while you're at it and that way you can really get started changing your life now let's get back to the program We're on break, and while I give myself a second to regroup, I'd like you to consider what having private mentoring with me would be like. You see, I accept a small number of people each year for private coaching. The question is, what do you want to make? Who do you want to become? We can program and shape any area of yourself or your life. Imagine right now what you would be doing if you had no fear. Imagine how your life would look if there were no patterns and blocks repeatedly tripping you up. Imagine if you were fully healed in your heart, body, and mind. Imagine if you also had a map to your success and you could follow it with ease and flow. Well, I look into you and into your life and I feel where you're going and know where the road is open and where it's blocked. I help you make the very best decisions based on what's coming up for you. I'll also show you exactly what I do day to day to succeed in my personal and business life. And we can create a copycat plan for you. So if you're game, you can fill out an application on my website for private coaching. Just go to flowdreaming.com slash coaching. And then let's talk. I mean, the time to go for it is now. So let's just get this started. Now let's get back to the show.
Hey friends, let's just take a second to point out a few really awesome resources for you. Every week you hear me do this program as I wax on about some particular uh, aspect of energy or life or growth. But I also have an amazing website that's filled with a decade of information all on the same things, including the Flow Dreaming Shop, where you can find all sorts of flow dreams, over 150 of them, that will help you fix up and shape up all different areas of your life. By the way, all the flow dreams can be listened to on your phone or mobile device. You just have to have the app for that. So if you don't have that yet, just open up your app store in whatever kind of device you're on and download Flow Dreaming. You'll find a couple of apps, actually. They're both free. And that will help you get even more deep into the world of flow. And with that, we're back to the program. That's a wrap for today. But if you want to keep things going, then download my free Flow Dreaming apps. That's right, there's two of them. The first app allows you to listen to this podcast anywhere you want on your mobile device, as well as search and favorite episodes. The other app hooks you up with my manifesting store, which includes an oracle to help you see what direction you most are in need of right now and advice. You can also sample all kinds of flow dreams and put together a library of your own. So to find these apps, just search Flow Dreaming in iTunes or on your Google App Store.
So I have a really important question for you. Me school. You've heard me talk about it, mention it. And I'm just wondering when it might be a fit for you. When you might jump to the next level, which is going from maybe listening to the flow dreams and playing with them, or listening to this podcast and saying, there is, there is a next point from here. And I've been kind of playing around the same area for quite a while, and uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to see what else there is. And maybe you're nervous and scared. You don't know how much it costs. You don't know what happens there. You don't know what will happen for you there. Look, don't be. Just don't be scared. Me School is the most beautiful thing I think I have made in my life. But it's the most beautiful thing because I take you, really, you, people just like you, into the program. And I take all the learning that I have been blessed with that I have been mentored with, and I have been mentored and blessed with some pretty amazing people in my life. And my job is to carry this information forward, to then pass it on to you. And what we pass on is how to live well, how to be you, authentically you, how to live into who you are, who you came here to be, how to find that, how to move through your ceilings and blocks and blossom. You know, you're probably looking at this next big chunk of your life and wondering what's going to be there? What's going to be in it? Is it going to be the same as it was before? Well, for it to be different, You need to start choosing yourself. You need to invest in yourself. You need to invest in your growth. You need to consciously say, I'm ready. It's time. I'm ready now. That's what we do in me school. We spend that time. And that's what we look at. Personal power. Your ability to generate wealth, security, time freedom. We look at your emotional self. Are you in love with yourself? Are you in love with life? If you're not, let's make that happen. It's just a question of whether you say yes or whether you say no yet again. So jump on over to my website, flowdreaming.com, and you'll find there a link, a button, an image. There'll be something where you can learn more about me school and set up a time to talk with me, and we will get you going. I'll share and answer all of your questions and uh, hopefully be able to start working with you as you discover what your life is really there for and how it really wants to show up for you. So right now, go to flowdreaming.com and just get your time scheduled for us to talk and think about me school and where you're going next. Just get it done. It's past time. And now, let's get back to our show.